Hey everyone, it's David C. Anderson coming at you from the Knife Center. And it's a new year, which means, as is typical for the knife industry, Seth, mute. There we go. Pardon the, uh, the amateur hour people I'm dealing with. No, no, just kidding, just kidding, everyone. Uh, welcome to this, uh, this live unboxing of new CRKT. It's the first big product release of 2024. Uh, and it, it is right here. Uh, CRKT, known for their budget-minded stuff, of course, working on some new premium stuff this year, like they have uh, last year as well, but primarily the budget stuff. But for those of you who like to see budget knives continue to improve, something you're gonna appreciate right here. No 8CR13 MOV blades on this batch of new CRKT stuff. That's pretty big news, actually. Uh, before we get into uh, the actual unboxing of these knives, I will say they are available now. So if you see anything you like, Check out the link in the description. That'll take you to knifecenter.com. And as always today, introducing my, uh, my lovely cohorts. Well, lovely might not be the best word, but we've got Thomas. Such as they are. Such as they are. We've got Thomas behind the camera, uh, as always, running the, uh, the lights and the switching and all that. And I've got Seth over here uh, to my left. Uh, he's monitoring the chat stream on this, uh, on this live stream. So if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to drop them in there and he'll be uh, feeding me some uh, throughout. Without further ado, however, let's open some knives. We are let's get into it. We are indeed. All right, so I've not seen any of these before in person. I've seen some of the, uh, the specs, uh, so I kind of know what to expect, but this is gonna be my first time getting any of them in hand. And let's start with, hmm, let's start with right here. This is the Padawan. So let me pull, let me make sure I've got the uh, specs in front of me here, because I know that is definitely important. Didn't put these in any order, did we? No. <laughs> Come on, let's let's get it open. It this is, is a be true, honest, blind unboxing. <laughs> All right, the Padawan. Seth, can you tell us who designed this knife? The Padawan was designed by Pedro Buzetti. Uh, I believe that is Flavio Icuoma's um, protege. Ah, that is, I think you're correct about this. That is pretty nice. So we've got a stainless steel frame lock here, canvas micarta inlays front and back, just back and front. Uh, there is the frame lock, as you can see, uh, 14C28N blade steel on this particular knife. Uh, Seth, what's the price gonna be on this one? And on the website right now, it's sixty four ninety five. Okay, okay, not bad. The the first detail I'm seeing right off the bat. Check out that crown spine here. Not only is it crown, that has a really nice polish to it. I hope that comes across on camera. Looking good. It looks a little dull on the screen here in front of me, but there is an almost mirror like sheen to that coming across. I ho I hope that comes across at least a little bit because that is pretty sweet. Deep carry pocket clip. Very nice. Uh, Micarta backspacer matching the inlays. And let's check out that action again. Very nice. Unassisted, you've got your, uh, your ball bearings in the pivot. I'm assuming it's an IKBS system. Uh, that would be uh, very on brand for them. Very clean, very nice. I like the kind of slicer shape to this drop point blade right there. That's gonna, that's gonna cut real nicely. That was the sound of slicing. That was the sound a slice makes, yes indeed. <laughs> Uh, all right, there we go. Horizontal grain on this, uh, another kind of premium feeling feature. Getting a lot for that. Check out this, I just noticed. Thomas, how close can you get in uh, from the spine here? Let's see. Yeah, okay, pretty close. I can see we go from this angle. You can actually see the micarta scale from the inside of the handle. You've got a cutout uh, going full through that. So you're removing a bit of weight, of course, since it is stainless steel uh, and that's, Pretty nice. Yeah, several degrees or several steps of uh, pocketing there on the inside to remove the weight. Not too heavy. Um, 3.1 ounces for a stainless steel frame lock. Not bad. All right, next. All right, we've got, it looks like we've got two new M16 versions right here. Uh, M16, of course, a classic in the CRKT lineup, uh, designed by Kit Carson, who is the man who popularized the flipper, uh, which is, you know, you can't shake a stick 
these days without seeing a new, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and hitting a bunch of flippers They're in the warehouse. They're flippering everywhere. They, they do indeed flip everywhere, and that's there's a reason for that. It's convenient, it's fast, and it's fun. Uh, so yeah, two new blades, or uh, two new blade shapes, I'm assuming. Uh, this is the smaller sized knife, a uh, bit over three inches on the blade length. We've got a spear point and we have a Tonto. Yes, partially serrated Tonto. VEF partial serrations there. Uh, very aggressive on fibrous materials, especially rope. Uh, let's see, other key specs. Seth, what's the steel on these? It's going to be D2 on both. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, that is going to make it a very aggressive cutter, thanks to those big carbides in that D2. Uh, price on these? $47.95 for the spear point uh, and $44.95 for the Tanto. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I wonder why that's uh, slightly less. Because hmm. usually you think, uh, you know, serrations is technically an, technically an extra step, but hey, who am I to argue? Uh, so these do have CRKT's auto locks system as well here, which is that little red tab that you can see that engages automatically and gives you an extra safety essentially to keep the uh the lock from disengaging you're not gonna be able to oh actually well you can kind of force back force past it just a little bit as we found out but not on the tonto that we might actually have to uh take the spear point one out of circulation because that shouldn't have happened that's what happens when you're live i guess folks um, normally, we caught it instead of one of you guys. Hey, there you go. Uh, normally, what you have to do is actually pull that tab back in order to disengage the liner lock. It looks like if you if you really want to push past it, you can. We might be doing damage to it in the process. All right. Well, that's a little bit of an inauspicious start. Sorry, guys. Um, I would say it's easy to deactivate if you want because you can, of course, kind of disable, take out the parts. I've seen folks do it. Uh, so keep that in mind as well, if you wish. Uh, single position pocket clip on this tip down carry, right side only. Pretty good price for the the materials here, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say it's competitive. And it's not an assisted knife either. This is running on ball bearings. And the flipping action is very good. So there you go. Two new M16s to take a look at. That's the, uh, the 10DZ uh, and the 01DZ. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at those liner locks, and if there's any update, we'll put it in the pinned comment. Yeah, we'll make sure that uh, that we're not doing something ham-fisted that we kind of messed up. Uh, it is us. It is us, after all. Next knife. Uh, looks a bit like a classic that you may have seen, but it is not quite the same. Uh, so this is a new home front, which is, of course, a Ken Onion design. Smaller. Home front mini. Flips great. Let's see. Let me pull up my specs on this one. That's closer to the front, I believe, of my printouts here. And Seth, of course, you have that probably quicker than I do. I do. What do you want to know? Uh, well, let's start with the blade material, because that's the big news, I think, right here. Previous versions of the uh, large size of this knife you could get with either OS 8 or uh, 4116, I believe. I think that's right. Uh, for the full-sized versions that have been out there. They did do a premium lion steel made version at one point that had M390, but that was limited. Uh, so this knife, however, is coming in with, Seth, take it away. I know what it is, but what it, you tell the folks. <laughs> it's gonna be S35VN. Hey, very cool upgrade over the base stainlesses on the, uh, the full-sized models. Uh, blade length on this is going to be just under three inches. Yeah, 2.89. So it's going to be a very handy length. You can take just about anywhere. And it's got that great home front swagger. I mean, it's a in classic like Ken Onion fashion, I think. Um, he's done a drop point. And then, yes, it's a basic drop point. But the more you look at it, the less it's basic, if you know what I mean. Like there's some flair to that quote unquote basic shape that I just love. It's a little narrower at the back, flares out towards the belly. Plenty of belly right there for those long sweeping slices, but it's not so high that you're not gonna be able to use that tip effectively. That's gonna be quite nice. Black coating on it for aesthetics. You don't need it for stainlessness because S35 is of course a stainless steel. Uh, not a uh, field strippable version like the original home front was. This is just a conventional flipper. Ball bearings in the pivot, no assist going on, just perfectly snappy action. 
You've got a inset deep carry pocket clip here for right side tip up carry uh, with a single screw holding that in place. Aggressively textured G10 there for plenty of grip and the, it feels like aluminum on the bolster there. Seth, can you confirm? Let me see. Uh, yeah, black aluminum yes. bolsters. Very, very nice. Uh, only thing left to talk about, I guess, is the price. Where are these coming in right now? $174.95. $174.95. There you are, folks. There you got it. All right, next knife is another kind of return of a classic. Uh, one of two, actually, but this is, I think, the only one we have today. It is a new version of the Squid Mini. Is this just, or is this just the Squid? What's the orange handled squid being officially called right now, Seth? That is the Squid Compact. Squid Compact. Two inch blade? Yes. Uh, 1.75. 1.75. And steel? D2. D2, man. And price? 34.95. 34.95, not bad at all. I mean, this thing is just, like I use this word endearingly, this thing is just like a little runt. It is just a little, Bulldog runt. I mean, it is a stout little blade. The D2 is going to have very good edge retention, especially for, you know, at that $35 price point. Uh, this is one of their assisted opening knives. Um, in a way, that's kind of good when you come to a smaller knife like this, uh, especially at the price point. Getting the flipping action right is more difficult and sometimes requires a little more time and expense to get right. But look at that. Every time, easy deployment whether you use the thumb studs or the uh, flipper tab, or I'm assuming the thumb studs, well, yeah, not too bad. My hands, as folks know, are slightly larger than average, so small knives can sometimes present uh, issues for me. And when I go to use the thumb studs, quite honestly, it's just a little bit on the small side for me. And I actually, no joke, am really appreciating the assist in that case. If I do it in a standard hold, I can still do that. But if I wanted to flick it open with the thumb studs, that assist is really going to help me. The flipper tab as well, that would probably be the way I open it every time. Uh, let's see. Stainless steel on the frame lock on the back. Lock up itself. Super, super stable. D2 blade, as mentioned. Nice and stubby. G10 orange on the front. There is also going to be a teal G10 version uh, as well. And I believe that's going to have... Not the blackened blade. I think that's going to have a satin blade, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but you can find that. You should be able to find that on the site. Not at the link below, because that's only showing what's in stock right now. But if you go to the brand page on the site, you'll be able to see that. Nice. Any questions from the comments section so far, Seth? Anything uh, worth bringing up? Let's see. Somebody in Virginia says, stay safe through the storm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It is uh, getting a little bit hairy out there, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the wind was really picking up, uh, and uh, the rain was really picking up. It calmed down a little bit right before we started this, uh, this live stream, so hopefully that holds uh, as we uh, kind of close out the end of the day. Thank we do you have for... an internet connection that relies on that. <laughs> we also do that, but thank you for your concern. Uh, all right, next one. We have a new CEO micro flipper. Let's check this out. Actually, let's wait on that one. Okay. Only, only because so far we've only seen one wholly new design. Uh, we've seen new versions, new, like smaller and, and variants. But let's, here's something new. We've got a new Daryl Caston designed knife to take a look at. And it is a slip joint. Here we go. Let me set that right there as I move the box out of the way. All right. Seth, what's the name on this one? Uh, the Forebear. <laughs> it's interesting. On the box, this one just says Caston Knife, uh, which is uh, slightly unusual. Normally, you've got the full uh, model name on there. But yes, the Forebear. Not Three Bear, not Five Bear. It shouldn't be the Two Bear, really. With, <laughs> with how the many two blades it has, yeah. That's a good point. Well, here we go. Here is the Forebear slip joint. Uh, it is a two bladed affair. Uh, and this is one I'm actually genuinely pleased that CRKT is making because we've seen the D-Rocket versions of this, which is, of course, Daryl Caston's uh, house brand, his own brand, I should say. And, you know, they were pretty pricey, as one would expect, being premium materials and construction as they were. But this is definitely not going to carry the same premium price tag. You still get the cool 
design going on. What's the price on this, Mr. Seth? $64.95. $64.95. You've got two blades, two Warncliffe blades of 12C27 Sandvik steel. And that's a steel I am definitely going to appreciate when the tip gets as narrow as it does on this Warncliffe blade right here. Why is that? Well, when tips get this narrow, tips get this acute, you always run the risk and worry of snapping it off when you're engaging in some bigger cuts that you might be going through, or even just heavier scores. 12C27, thankfully, has a decent bit of toughness just inherent to it, so that's gonna be a help in that regard. It's definitely not impossible to still damage your blade, but at least uh, the deck is stacked a little bit in your favor for this. That's nice. Single backspring for both of these blades. You've got a red and black G10, I believe, is that G10? Yes, it is. It has a cool kind of barky look to it in a way. Um, so yeah, the red's peeking through. Actually, what would be really neat, I think, to really enhance that almost wood-like quality, what if you writ dyed this with a little bit of brown? That'd look nice. And you'd get kind of that even more natural look to it. That'd be pretty sweet. But anyway, that's the main blade. What's the length on that? Let's see here. Just a hair over two and a quarter for that main blade. And then for those real fine detailed cuts, you've got the itty bitty boy right here with a nice little milled puller for extracting. Just a hair over one inch on that particular blade. No half stop, just smooth throughout the travel. Not too bad. Yeah, they are, of course, uh, not pinned in the construction. They are uh, fixed with uh, Torx screws right there, so you can adjust them a little bit. I'm not sure you would want to tighten it down too much. You theoretically could if you wanted it to be have an even stiffer action, but it's not a dangerously loose action in any case. Very cool. Now we can take a look at that micro flipper. <laughs> Let's see, I'll get on the right page here. Seth. Yeah. You know who designed the micro flipper. Sh share it with the people, why don't you? The micro flipper is a Richard Rogers design. Of course it is. The CEO, the original CEO, smash, smash success for C CRKT, of course. The flipper, original flipper version, also a smash success. So it's no surprise we're continuing to see more and more cool versions. So we've seen the, the other versions of the micro flipper before this. This is just a essentially a all blacked out version of it. Uh, blade length on these particular ones, 2.36. D2 blade steel on it, aluminum handles. Uh, again, anodized black. You've got kind of a wave pattern there for texture. A Little bit blockier than the original CEOs, which were of course injection molded, so you could get a little more contouring uh, at the price point, the aluminum if you wanted to do contouring on that, of course, would really push the prices up on them. Uh, speaking of, what is the price on this one, Seth? Ooh, it's gonna be $49.95. $49.95, all right. Uh, previous versions of this, I believe, were only available with 12C27, is that correct? Let me check the series, but Let's I think that's the series right. real quick. Um, and those were even a little bit more expensive than, uh, than this. Yeah, yeah, about $5 more. Okay. Um, Where's the blade steel? Oh, you know what? Yeah, about $5 more and 12C27. There you go. So D2, of course, should hold an edge longer than 12C27. So you're getting more edge retention for less money, which is kind of nice. Uh, less toughness uh, for your money. 12C27, as we mentioned, is fairly tough. D2, not particularly tough. To what degree that matters on a sub two and a half inch bladed knife, however, probably matters a little bit less. So it's, you're not really giving up too much in terms of actual usable performance uh, in the toughness category from that switch there, but you are gaining a lot in your edge retention. Hmm, I actually misspoke that this, this version is $10 cheaper than the previous micro ah, flipper. Yeah. That's even better. Nice substantial bite off of the price. Yeah, I mean, as much as I like 12C27 and I appreciate its toughness, it's, it's not gonna be as big a deal on a small knife like this. Yeah. So for, you're getting more performance for a whole $10 less. That's pretty sweet. Uh, you've, of course, got the typical uh, CEO style construction, which is to say 
taking a little bit of inspiration from classic doctor's knives in that you've got a flat plate here at the back, which in the doctoring idiom would have been used to uh, crush up and dispense pills. More like a pharmacy idiom in that case, actually. Uh, but that's pulled through here, and the deep carry pocket clip is spine mounted from that plate as well. And it's reversible, so you can flip that around no problem without any loss of time, really, either. Whoop. Again, the small knife comes to bite <laughs> me in the, in the hand, shall we say. Uh, not really, didn't actually cut. So there you go. Another new micro clipper. All right, let's see. All right, let's do this one right here. This is the Brusetti knife. All right, Seth, you're pulling up the specs, I believe. I'm finding it. Ah, this is sort of, I'm seeing it already, a companion or a sister to oh, the yeah. Padawan we just looked at. Let me flip open the Buzetti. Let's do it here. There we go. Yeah, check that out. Handles are the same between the two. You've just got two uh, different blade styles and two different inlay materials going on. So there you go. Padawan at the top, more of an upswept Skinner style blade. Almost Ness Muck. Ness-ish. Ness, Ness Muck-ish. Uh, and then you've got the more kind of modified Warncliffe, we'll say. Actually, you know what blade shape this reminds me of a little bit? The same one they put on the, um, and now, of course, the name is escaping me, the Fossil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of Fossil blade shape DNA in this, perhaps. I think that was an Ikoma design. Was it? Yeah. So we've got the lineage Ikoma. Yeah. Of the, uh, the Padawan here. Yeah, good call out. Student. <laughs> Good call out indeed. Uh, I'm gonna assume the blade steel on this is gonna be 14C28N again. Yep. Yep. And price should be about the same as the paddle Yeah, one. identical, 64.95. 64.95. It's got that same shiny crown spine that I really appreciate about the paddle one too. Check that out. You uh, transition here right at the hump from the crown to a flat section as the tip or as the spine falls down towards the tip. Same horizontal satin grain. Same great feel in the handle. That stainless steel gives you a feeling of rigidity, but you've also got that same lightweight thing going on thanks to the, uh, the both the milling pockets and the cut-throughs on the uh, inside of that stainless steel front scale, or front handle, I guess you would say. Yeah, man, that's cool. That's very cool. Let's see, let's try the reverse flick. Yeah. No, First try. No problems at all. Yeah, that's really nice. On paper, these these look good, but they didn't super excite me. In hand, really digging that. I, really. Think, I think the chat's enthusiastic about these ones, too. Yeah? Yeah, we had a comment asking to see the padded one again. Throw them right up there, right yeah. next to each other. Yeah, those are very nice. And, of course, folks, uh, once this live stream is over, uh, you will be able to go back and uh, and watch it at any time. So, Assuming uh, I did it right. Assuming Thomas didn't screw something else up. <laughs> Zing. See, usually with the pre-recorded stuff, I have time to fix things. <laughs> yeah, usually with the pre-recorded stuff, I have time, you have time to make my mistakes go away. I don't have that right now. It's all hanging out in the open today. <laughs> all right, we've got another Richard Rogers design. This is the Persian. A little bit of a larger Richard Rogers knife. With D2 steel on this one, let's do a flip. There you go. Nice, big trailing point blade, or at least big in the context of what we've looked at so far. Not uh, inordinately large, only about a 3.4 and a half, 3.44 inch blade. Uh, so a three and a half inch knife. Good, solid size without being a quote unquote big knife. It's kind of like right on that line of what I consider a, like a full size knife before you get it, start getting into the larger knives. Yeah, D2 steel, holds an, gonna hold an edge, trailing point, slicer, all, the way. Slicey, slicey. Uh, G10 handles that feel really good, actually. Thomas, get real close if you can on this handle. We've got two different textures, basically. The flat has sort of a dimpled, almost golf ball-like texture, whereas the sides angle back down towards uh, you know either side a little bit, so you get this nice shapeliness to the handle, and that's got more of like a mesh-like texture uh, milled into it, almost like like um, like athletic shorts style or something <laughs> or other. Uh, it has a really 
nice look in person. Like you get those contrasting directions that create an effect that's that I'm just appreciating. So yeah. Inset liner lock to keep things nice and secure. Deep carry clip inset with flush mounted screws, which is quite nice. Uh, this is an assisted opening knife and continuing their tradition of their new assisted opening mechanism, which is a torsion bar system. It is kind of the easiest to operate in closing action of any assist out there, really. Yeah. Solid. Uh, what's the price on this one? That's the only one we haven't talked about just yet. $49.95. $49.95 for a three and a half inch D2 blade. Yeah, definitely competitive right there. All right. Ooh, speaking of classics, we have a new version of a bona fide classic, but not the bona fide, not the CRKT bona fide. <laughs> that was a knife. Folks, you already probably know it. A new drifter with a flipper tab, an unassisted flipper. Yeah, very, I'm, I'm liking it already. So this is the newest version of only one of just two designs in CRKT's lineup that does not have a designer's name attached to it, actually. Uh, so this and the uh, Pizzota, I think, is still around. Sounds right. Um, all these other designs, of course, uh, follow the CRKT playbook in that they're bringing you custom designers with their custom designs to a much more affordable price point. And they do it in a way that I don't think any other company really has equaled in terms of translating the vision accurately or as accurately as possible into a budget price point. But this is just kind of a knife, little knife design that just won't die, so to speak, because it's just so dang useful. Uh, specs on this one, Mr. Seth, what is the steel first off? Gonna be D2. D2, and what is the price? $39.95. Ooh, oh, that's, that's really nice. For, what is it, like two and three quarter inch blade? I can't, I can't remember exactly. All right, yeah, 2.9, uh, 2.8. Oh, so it is, it's closer to an actual three inch knife. Mm -hmm. here. Nice and thin, hollow grind, keeping it thin behind the edge too. But the top of that shoulder, being as the blade stock itself is not super thick, is still gonna be nice and efficient. Uh, still a tip down pocket clip. Uh, that might be the only thing that turns some folks off of it. I know tip up is uh, definitely a good preference or a big preference these days. But I'll tell you what the drifter has always been good at. A, a Just a regular old knife for regular old people that just need a pocket knife. And this has always nailed that so well. This continues to be that. It's slim. It's going to carry carry real easily. The blade is going to cut very efficiently. It's going to be easy enough to maintain, uh, even though D2 does take a little bit more to sharpen than some of the basic steels that this knife has come with in the past. You're also getting a heck of a lot more performance than other versions of the knife this knife have come with in the past. So there you go. The flipper tab, you've seen me using it. It works great. The thumb studs are working excellently. Also, are these ball bearings as well here? Checking in the light. I, they feel like they are. Um, Do we have I'm that not, info? I'm not seeing that info, but on the site, we'll easy. probably add it in the coming days as we go through and take our own product photos, et cetera. Yeah, let's, let's go through as I check here. It certainly feels like it. I've always appreciated the recurve blade on the Drifter. Really? Like, especially, yeah, especially for a user who's like a buy it and forget it kind of person, like that recurve is going to give you noticeably more cutting power, especially as the blade dulls a little bit. And it's kind of worth appreciating. Yeah. I mean, there's not, it's not a hugely aggressive recurve, so it adds something, sure. I don't know how much necessarily, but, but the, the advantage of it being as slight as it is, it's going to be easier to sharpen. Yeah. So that's a whole other thing too. But, but Seth brings up a very good point. A recurve adds sharpened edge without adding length. So you get more compact power, more power in a compact space. I think the advantage comes from the end of the recurve, like the way that it gathers material or sort of pushes mm -hmm. material mm -hmm. back into the edge instead of into the handle. Instead of just sliding off. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, it, makes, it makes a knife feel more powerful. There you go. Yeah. And for a small knife to get more power is always a good thing. You know, that was really funny. The whole time I was flipping through and it was on the, the top page that I was looking <laughs> at here. Um, let's see, we, we asking about, yeah, it, it looks like bearings, but it's, it's hard to tell exactly. Um, we'll be able to confirm that at some point. All right, next one. 
I haven't gotten to the fixed blades yet. This is the Ancestor. And this is another Daryl Caston design. Here it is. We've got G10, two-tone. Uh, they're, are they calling that orange G10 or is it a brown G10? Um, they're calling it brown and black G10. Well, I would agree with, uh, with that classification. It's a little easier to actually be accurate with colors on G10 than it is with uh, Micarta sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there we go. So this is a liner locking knife, not a slip joint. And it is a flipper knife with a subtle flipper tab here right at the back. Let's flip it. Kind of a trailing point Tonto, not kind of, but that's a trailing point Tonto blade right there. Uh, nice full length swedge on that spine too. Check that out. That's gonna help it just kind of move through things. Cause you're basically, the way I usually describe swedges, I'll describe it like that here too. You're removing drag from the spine as you're cutting through things. So it helps not only make your cuts a little bit more efficient, but also helps moving around a radius when you're cutting makes that a little easier as well. Uh, let's see, D2 steel, 3.6 inches on that blade length and a handle that lets you use every last inch of it. There's no flipper tab to get in the way. You could choke right up behind that edge and check it out. You folks know, like I mentioned, slightly larger than average hands here. And I've still got a little bit sticking out at the back when I'm all the way choked up around the pivot. So big handed folks should be able to use this without too much trouble. And yet it's not gonna carry like a big knife. Look how narrow that is when you slip that into the pocket. Nice big easy knife. That would, this would kind of be a big easy knife. It's not necessarily super light for its size. Well, hang on now, this says 2.8 ounces on the, uh, on my printout here, which actually is pretty yeah, darn light would, for its impressive. size. Maybe I'm feeling the, like I'm perceiving the weight a little differently here in my hand. I'm not sure. That one definitely is bigger in person than I was expecting from the product photos. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I wonder if that weight is correct. Anyway. Hmm. But yeah, it is, it is a bit of a bitty, big, easy knife, as Thomas mentioned. That is definitely going to carry quite easily and give you a lot of cutting potential, especially with that D2, again, as mentioned. Uh, Seth Price. 64.95. 64.95. 3.6-inch D2 blade, IKBS ball bearings, G10 handles. Is this intended to be a front flipper as well? I guess is the question. Um, Cause I well, it's in our short description. Well, I guarantee you I'm gonna <laughs> botch it right now. Let's try. Oh, well, you know, I got part of the you way. You technically flipped it open. I wasn't confident enough. I needed to trust myself more. Oh, come on now. I'm not quite getting it, but so it does. This is when we need a, a soundboard with a drum roll. <laughs> it doesn't help that I have a little bit of a cut on my, uh, the side of my thumb right here that would be engaging that. So I'm a little, I don't know. I'm not committed enough to the action to get it done correctly, I guess. Seth, you want to try it? I'll give it a shot. Yeah, let's let's hand it to Seth offside here. All right, that was, that was the Standard conventional flip. flip. All right. Hey, hey there we okay. go, folks. All right, if we try to front flip anything else on this live stream, I'm just handing it straight to you. <laughs> this is cool, that blade shape is is pretty striking. It is neat. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely something you can never accuse Daryl of not being as striking. Uh, his designs always have For that sure. thing going on. All right, this one is, this one just has a number, 7930. Ooh, mystery box. Let's see what's in here. Aha, I know what this is. This is the Orca. I think that's what it's called. Oh, that uh, Jim Hammond? Is it a Hammond design? Yes, That's it the is. That's the 7930, yep. A Jim Hammond design, yes. This is another stubby knife. Check that out. Oh, and look, it, it does kind of have the look. Well, it almost looks <laughs> like a cross between a cetacean and a, uh, a rhinoceros right there, doesn't it? If the Norco became a narwhal. Or... Yeah, it's like a sea bear. A sea bear. Wow, that is a, that's pretty cool, actually. And I can't help it. It's got little feet. I love yes. it. Like that. If uh, this is like an affordable uh, alternative, something like the spider Pochi. I was just thinking that. Mm -hmm. And you've got the dorsal fin there at the top. All right, let's flip it. Whoa, man, that came out fast, which must mean this is an assisted opening knife. Yes, it is. Easy, to, easy enough to close. Hang on to it, though, when uh, you fire it, because that liked to go 
on me there. Um, this is actually, um, I don't remember the name of it. This is actually kind of a small version of an old fixed blade from CRKT's lineup. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Was it the Flesh Eater? I don't think I'm going to be any help. I don't. Do, do us some Googling. Google uh, CRKT Flesh Eater, if you don't mind. Save um, Search On. Save Search On. It was a much larger uh, tactical fixed blade. And this has a bit of that in it, if I'm remembering uh, I, correctly. Okay, I see what you're saying. Is that what you're thinking of? Yes. All right. This is, this is very janky, but here. Thomas. There we go. <laughs> there it is yep it's even got like the dorsal finny thing going on yeah there we go there we go all right get rid of that and then people uh, who always like to watch check you will now know you have a seiko monster today <laughs> all right so this is of course not a uh, a thick tactical fixed blade however this is just a straight up edc friendly design what is it d2 steel Short blades, 1.79 inches, very thin, full flat grind, little slicer all the way, but thanks to that shape on the handle, super, super secure in the hand. I mean, nothing. And the dorsal fin doesn't even get in the way. It doesn't poke me like, like you might fear. Like it just kind of nestles into that hollow space in the, uh, the palm of your hand as you use it. Super, super, super. Be a little careful. The liner lock is right here at the front. So I am watching that a little bit. Make sure your hand doesn't, uh, or finger doesn't stay in the way. There you go. Very, very cool. All right, we got to speed things up here. We've got a pen. This is a new uh, Mike Bond pen, larger version of the uh, Tech Liner series. Very nice. Bolt action. I like that. Feels pretty good. Feels like you could use a little bit of smoothing as you uh, use it, but it's kind of where you want it to be right out of the box. Uh, the tip of the insert sits out well enough. You're going to be able to actually see it very well as you go to write with it. And I believe this is a pressurized cartridge uh, from Schmidt, not from Fisher. Yes, it is. So it's basically a Fisher Space Pen cartridge, just not made by Fisher. Uh, so you've got all the same advantages it will write upside down. It will write over, you know, suboptimal surface conditions such as like oily, greasy bits. Uh, do they write underwater? I can't remember. Uh, it depends on the paper. Depends on the paper. So, there you go. yeah, very, very nicely done. Yeah, feels good. Aluminum, uh, or is that steel actually? Uh, aluminum. Stainless steel handle, according to this printout. Oh. We might have to adjust our website, huh? Um, yeah, I like that. I like that. All right. Aha, I know what this is. We have a new Grivery handled Provoke. New color, uh, or new old color. I think, do they have the red for a little bit? Uh, but I remember an orange. orange. I remember the orange. Uh, Was there a red trainer, perhaps? It might have been. I'm actually looking on the screen here in front of me, and it is coming across a little oranger on screen. It is a little bit more of a, uh, almost a brick red. If you're unfamiliar with the Provoke, you've got the kinematic action right there, which is very cool because it does a few things. One, you can open it very, very quickly just by pushing with your thumb and then you're in the proper karambit grip right there. Uh, it is also nice in that if one of the pivots fails, the chances of it folding closed on your hand next to zero. Anything's possible and we're not lawyers, but that is an advantage of this style of construction. It does lock open, which is nice. The blade is freely visible when it is closed, but to keep you from accidentally getting in there and you know cutting yourself, it is a chisel ground knife with a double bevel. So it's technically not a chisel grind, but it is flat on the one side with just a single sided V bevel, if you can kind of see that right there. There we go, that's not too bad. So that keeps it nice and tucked in there on the handle. These will of course fit the, um, the belt sheath system that is out there, or you can just slip it into the pocket with the sprung pocket clip right here. And you can even, instead of just using your thumb, as I showed you here, draw it in just the correct way. You can use that backside on the hem of your pocket to draw the knife as you draw it, or deploy the knife as you draw it from your pocket. So very, very speedy, just like the originals. I'm gonna assume this is about a hundred bucks. 
99 just like the other uh, grivery versions of this knife. Uh, if you want higher end materials, uh, the stainless steel, I think it is, those are about twice the price. Uh, the steel is upgraded on those too, however, right? These, what's this, a 4116? Yep, yep. yep. 4116. Uh, if you want uh, D2, you can get that on the, uh, the higher end versions, however. So there you go. And last, but certainly not least, we have three new versions of the Bear Claw. Let me get them out here. That's one. It comes with, we'll just show it here real quick, a pocket clip and a Torx tool and a lanyard right there. Color matched, as you can see, depending on which version of the Bear Claw you're getting. Getting crowded over here with boxes, but that's fine. Pardon me. Maybe it's just a happy man opening boxes. I mean, I get to open boxes of knives for a living. It's pretty cool. So here we go. There is your sheath. There is the blade. This happens to be the rescue version, which comes with those vefserations and a blunted tip. There is also this black bladed version with just a nice wicked hawkbill blade shape and the orange handled version is also that rescue version right here and it's kind of a cool thing if you look at these two in contrast they serve in my mind very different purposes but i know the rescue version right here highly regarded in climbing circles hmm. especially because it's easy to get out of the sheath and you've got a solid hold on it with that index finger ring right there and if you need to cut rope without cutting yourself or cutting someone else when you're trying to cut clothing off or, or something like that, the serrations are going to make short work of that fibrous material and the blunted tip is going to keep you, uh, help prevent accidental injuries right there. Yeah, man, that's cool. The other thing it does is that self-defense roll in this uh, hawk build version right here. Because it does some of those things, you know, you know some of the competition out there where it's kind of like, point and click type of thing. Uh, you hold the knife, extend your arm, and the blade is pointing towards what you want it to be pointing towards, which is the other thing and not you. And it does it very, very naturally. You've got that security thanks to the index finger ring right there. Again, not likely to slip out or less likely to slip out of the hand. Yeah, wicked. Seth, let's talk specs. What's the price on these bad boys? All three are going to be $59.95. With what steel? Uh, OS 8. Aus 8 and Aus 8. Aus 8, Aus 8, Aus 8, all around. Really nice, really secure feeling, like I mentioned, and really, in a way, hand filling. I mean, there is plenty of girth right there to wrap your fingers around and get things done. Yeah, very secure hold indeed. Awesome. Uh, that's all we've got now. There is some more stuff coming out. There's some automatics coming out more uh, in partnership with Hogue. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of that at SHOT Show up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we will be visiting CRKT again to see some of those things that have been announced but aren't quite out just yet. Um, Any Seth, questions, Seth? I was just about to ask. Hey. Any other questions from the uh, section over there to uh, be addressed? Um, I am not seeing a lot we could answer right now, to be honest, but uh, people are excited, I think, the live is uh, is fun for folks. Sound I'm, off in the chat if you had a good time. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Um, well, of course you had a good time. You opened a bunch of boxes. A bunch of knives. Any consensus on the highlights? I have something in mind myself, but I'm curious to see what other folks think. Have, have you seen anything kind of rising to the top, so to speak, Seth? Uh, the only thing I've seen mentioned a couple times is those Padawans. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I called the uh, the second one a different thing at first, didn't I? The, what did I say? Dragonettes or uh, the Busetti, sorry. Yeah, I agree. These Padawans really strike me as really nice. Both are called the Padawans. I, I miscalled the uh, the modified Warncliffe blade here earlier or something else. Uh, but yeah, both of these are Padawans, which makes more sense is why the uh, handles are identical. Those are definitely a high point for me. The other one, I like this uh, this D Rocket slip joint, this Daryl Casted slip joint. And again, terrible with names because these are these are brand new to us. I haven't memorized them all yet. Flying by the seat of our pants here. Uh, it's the forebear. The forebear. 
I think this is also my my other personal favorite uh, right now. To be honest, the Drifter, the new version of the Drifter is pretty cool too. I'm, it's cool to see that continuing to be such a good option for an affordable pocket knife. Quite honestly. Yeah. But anyway, S thirty five on the home front too. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's that's a very nice looking knife. That is a very nice looking knife. Uh, and and it's kind of a amongst this assortment, especially the poster child for. CRKT upgrading their materials. Again, no 8CR 13 MOV in this complete new uh, new lineup of things. Uh, and only one in 4116, and that happened to be the uh, Grivery Provoke, which already comes in, in 4116, so this is just a new color. So everything that's new has kind of stepped up the game just a little bit. Oh, you want to answer one question? Let's do it, let's do it. We got a couple, yeah, one question. Let's one do question. One How question. long is the pen? How long is the pen? All right, I've got my uh, handy dandy see-through ruler right here. This one's for Rob Nice. How uh, long is the pen? These Westcott uh, see-through rulers, by the way, best tool on the planet for measuring blade length, as far as I'm concerned. Or pen length. Or pen length. The pen is just a hair over seven and one eighth inches long in the closed position. And I believe, let me reconfirm this as well. I mentioned it had the uh, this pressurized Schmidt cartridge, but it has the Parker style attachment there, or uh, whatever you call it there at the back. So it is gonna be compatible with your favorite Parker compatible refill nice. if you're not into the, uh, the pressurized thing right there. Excellent, good question, thank you. That's it. Sweet. That's gonna do it. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the live feed. Uh, make sure if you're interested in this stuff, check out the link below. You can see all of this uh, on the site with full detailed specs and descriptions, et cetera. And like I said, we'll be uh, hanging out with CRKT in just a couple weeks at SHOT Show. Everyone, thanks so much. Thanks to Thomas for running the cameras. Thanks for everyone in the chat. Uh, if you have comments after the fact, when we're not live, you should still be able to leave those uh, underneath this video. So we, uh, we welcome those. And if any of the questions that were in the chat didn't get answered, I know we only got to just like two, <laughs> um, feel free to drop them in the comments again once this uh, video is posted, so to speak, after the live feed is done. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time.